Hi everyone, hi family. I'm here in Canada and I just figured out that actually through this pen I can start and stop. I normally run to the thing and come back. Anyways, I want to talk to you about uh, something that the father has been speaking to me. And so um, about the pains of the father, what he goes through. So if you're interested, stick around. I want to say to every one of you that, that watches our YouTubes and sends it to their friends, uh, thank you. So um, as many of you know, I have been uh, divorced and I have six beautiful children from my uh, marriage with my, fir my first wife. And uh, four of them live with her and two of them live with me in Germany. And so... Um, during the, the marriage and divorce and everything else, we had a difficult time. And so it wasn't one of those clear, clean, uh, civilized divorces. Um, and the fact that we were Christians and we live in 21st century, it didn't make it any nicer or more understanding. So it was one of those messy divorces. And as single father and single mom, we still are not doing the best job we could in cooperation and wanting to do the best for the children. Actually, it's still messy right now. So um, it has been so for past many years. But uh, just through these difficulties, I have been learning a lot about human nature, understanding that, but also understanding the pains of the Father in heaven. And so, um, past couple of years, I haven't really come because I really noticed that my children love me. They, they say to me, Dad, I love you, but they don't miss me. Uh, they say, I love you, but they don't want, it's not like, oh, I gotta call my dad, I gotta talk to him. And I noticed in past uh, couple of years, as I keep trying to get up like, at 3 a.m. because uh, the fact is the mother would say, oh, they need to be in bed. So I would get up at 3 a.m. to call them and everything. And they were not really excited to talk to me. It's really interesting uh, as they have grown up and they have become older, the contact has become less and less and less. And a little while ago, I was calling them and I was so excited to see them. I'm like, hey, how are you doing? And I was talking to my daughter, Roxana, and said, Roxana wanted to pass the phone to my son, Darius, and said, hey, you want to talk to dad? And he says, whoa, why do I have to talk to him? And I was like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You don't have to talk to me. I... I would love it if you want to, but uh, you don't have to. The reason I call you guys is not to make you feel miserable. I call you because I love you and I care about you. And I want to make memory with you. Unfortunately, because of the divorce, I have lost the opportunity to make memories with you. And so um, I realized no, they don't see that as an opportunity, but as a curse. And I said, look, why don't I do this? You guys know how my heart is towards you, how much I love you, and how much uh, I'm willing to do to spend time with you guys. Uh, when you want, you reach out to me, and you know I'll be always there for you. So last Christmas... I called them and I said, hey, I'd like to come and see you guys and then we can spend some time together. And so um, they're like, oh, okay, good. I'm like, I miss you guys. Yeah, yeah. Like, It doesn't seem like you miss me. My children may have some problems that, that uh, others don't have it, but they have one great thing about them that I really, really love and enjoy as painful as it may be sometimes. They're very truthful. And they, they said, no, Dad, not really. We don't really miss you. I was like, oh, okay. And so I said, then, and then I won't come. And so I didn't. And then uh, my daughter, uh, Mojda, is turning 16. And I, uh, she said, yeah, Dad, you can come and see me. I said, well, I can send you the money. If you want the gift, said, no, no, I'd rather have you come here. 
like, oh, okay, great. So do you want to go somewhere and everything so that uh, we can do maybe an all-inclusive somewhere or something else? The mom wouldn't allow that. I'm like, oh, okay, so no problem. I'll come to Vancouver. And so past few days, I've spent time with them, just the cooking for them, going out, walking, going to the park, playing, and all these kind of things. And as I've been going through these things, I have been also observing. They have been hanging out with Yusha, my, my nephew, and he was telling me about his vision. Uh, he's, uh, he's now much, he's taller than me, not much taller, but he's uh, young and he's like, I'm, I want to be big and I want to be a gladiator, uncle. And the moment he said, I want to be a gladiator, some fly just flew between his legs and touched the hair on his legs. And he's jumping like this. And I'm like, what happened? It's like, that fly just uh, touched the hair on my legs. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You're just uh, telling me you want to be a gladiator. And you're afraid of a fly? And he's like, what? And I was like, what is going on? And he, we just laughed about it and everything else. But later on, as I was thinking about that, I was talking to the Lord and I said, Lord, what is this? He wants to be a gladiator, but he's afraid of a fly. And the Lord said to me, you know, men, they have this conquering, yeah, I got to go to war kind of a personality. And unfortunately, 21st century, uh, in 21st century, the, the games of being a gladiator and killing somebody is on a computer and you see somebody die or you die, but no consequences at all. But when men took on swords, and went to war, and they saw a life, they, they were changed through those warfares. They were changed. Today, the men are completely different because they get that part of their, their satisfaction that they need to be a warrior by playing some game behind the screen. So they end up thinking they are gladiators and they can face all things when the, the, the warriors of histories would face dragons and they would take their swords and drive it into the head of a dragon, as many stories would say, and cut the heart of dragon and bring it out. Today, uh, our gladiators of time, the men that they produce today, are afraid of a fly. That's the type of gladiators we are producing. That's the type of men that are going to be the husbands to many of our daughters and our uh, future generation leaders. And I was thinking, whoa, what is going on, Lord? Where are we heading? And I was, uh, my son and my a nephew and my daughter went playing basketball and they throw the basketball. My daughter threw the basketball and it went into a bush and they all came in a couple of minutes later. I'm like, what happened? He said, we lost the ball. It went into a bush. I'm like, so why didn't you get it? And they're like, oh, uh, my son and uh, Yusha says, no, uh, well, the, the bush is full of thorns. It's really bushy. I'm like, what? You want to be a gladiator? You guys leave the ball and I just, they, they picked up their, their mobile phone and they stopped playing games and the basketball is gone. And I notice they have no drive to fight to get back what is theirs. They have no, they have not paid the cost to buy that, that ball or anything else. So nothing is precious to them. To this generation, nothing is important to fight for, to grab it, to get it back. Nothing. They don't care. Oh, it's gone, it's gone. Okay. We'll just pick up our mobile phone or go get behind the screen of our computer and play games. So I said to my son, and you shall get out there right now and you bring that ball back. Why? 
Why should I? Moshe threw it in there. I said, you do it because you are men. And as men, sometimes you have to do things for the women around you. Because that's God's plan for men. To be protectors, providers. And so they went out and came back. And I was just completely consumed by what's happening in my thought. Because I could see uh, when they become a husband or a father. What kind of a father or what kind of a husband they would be. And I thought to myself, what do we see, Lord? What, is, what are we facing? And I just slept. And when I was sleeping, I had a dream. And in my dream, the Lord just spoke to me about this, uh, this generation of computerized generation or gaming generation that really doesn't know what it is to be a man. And you know what? The mothers of this generation, because of the feminist movement and every other movement, somehow they have lost track and understanding that actually fathers are necessary. And I got to tell you, as a father, it's so hard to be a father in this generation. It's so hard to do what you want to do for your children because the mothers are telling their, their, their children, your father is the one that just brings the money or you go, especially in a divorce case. I see this again and again. Go get these things from your father. Like take. My daughter Kiana was talking to her sister and said, you guys see dad as a cash machine. And it's funny because at the same time, I had a, a picture, a vision that my children would walk up to me like I'm an ATM machine and they'll take money from me. And they didn't realize that as a father, everything that I have is yours. I love to do these things for you. But you know, you spend money on clothes, you buy clothes, you have something to wear. But you know, when you spend money on a restaurant, you eat it and you poop it, that's it, it's gone. And I realized every bit of finances and resources and time that I spend and love that I give to my children is at most like that food that they eat, digest and get rid of. Nothing remains. Because this generation does not know how to receive something that enriches them. They know how to consume. And consuming never gives you anything lasting. I got to say this. As I was um, thinking and I was, of course, sad by all of these things. I felt the father um, talking to me. And he says, Afshin, I know your pain. I said, how? And he says, my children, they come to me. And all they ask for is resources. And all that I have is for them. I understand you, Afshin. I want to call them and I want to talk to them. And they're like, why do I have to talk to him? And when they talk to me, it's always about what they want. As if the wife that has been training these children that's how you do it. And I'm like, what? And I felt the Lord just clearly showing me that the church leaders, the way we have ran church is like we are producing kids that go to the father with expectation. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Where are those women's 
Where are those leaders that raise a generation of children that says, oh, wow, you're so lucky to have a father. Go spend time and learn from your father. Go hear your father's heart. Where is that generation of leaders of church that raises a, a children that needs, they, they raises these children that needs the father just to be there? Because they want to be beside them. I remember in my generation, as we grew up, we would have loved to sit beside our fathers. We would have loved to go listen to him, his stories, what he knows, teach us something. A generation that was willing to receive. Not a generation that was willing to just get. And I felt the Father has been allowing me to go through these pains so that I understand as a leader, as a father for the church, to raise children that will honor the Father, that will not come to the Father just because of what they want to receive. Yes, a generation of warriors that are willing to go out and lay their life down for what they believe, for the vision and the words and the desires of the Father. That's why we are here. We are here to raise that generation. But it seems as leaders, we have failed to do that. As a father, I have failed to do that for my own children. We are not raising gladiators like the old days. We are raising a generation of gladiators that are not even willing to face the fly. We can't even talk about the dragon anymore. Killing the dragon is not an option. So, I want to say this to you. What are we doing here? What are we here for? For what we get? Or are we here to do the Father's heart? To know his heart and to see his heart established. So, as I leave you, I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you as a brother, as my daughter challenged her younger sister and saying, hey, do you see dad as a cash machine? As a brother, I want to challenge you. Do you see God as a cash machine, as a, a blessing machine, as a miracle machine? That you go in there and you put your card in there and says, hey, what do you want? Let me choose from the menu. Is he that to you? Or is he a real father? Because a real father has a heart and has emotions. And a real child, son, or real daughter cares about the emotions of a father. And they fight for those visions. They make his vision their vision. That's a real son. That's a real daughter. Bless you guys. Till next time.